What's going on guys, Biddy or Dylan here, and yeah, I haven't posted a video in a while, but I got something new and different today. It's a recap of a Pokemon VGC event I went to, uh, the mid-season showdown that happened in Island, New Jersey this past weekend, ran by Liberty Garden VG. Um, the links to all of their info will be in the description. Uh, pretty much, I'm going to be going over how the experience was for me, how I did, and like I'm going to review a uh, match that I had on stream. Uh, so to like quickly like recap to start it off, um, there were uh, seven rounds of best of three in the mid-season showdown. Uh, there were Swiss pools, oh, well a Swiss pool, and I went five and two in sets and finished 10th out of 105, barely missing the top eight uh, top cut. But for my first event, I um, am pretty happy with how it all went. Uh, this is the uh, team that I went with, as you can see. Uh, shoutouts to at Ajax underscore HQ, my homie on Twitter, for helping me out uh, building this team. Um, pretty much, like, when I, like, wanted to, like, I've been following VGC for a bit. Not really much the past couple years, but in Gen 4 and 5, I played it online with friends. Never really went to anything offline, except, like, <coughs> sorry. Except the side bracket that happened at Apex 2013, it was very scuffed, not official, but nonetheless, yeah, I like enjoyed watching it, been involved in Pokemon um, for a long time, so I was like, you know what, I like this gen, why not try it out? And it was nearby, uh, so yeah, I went up to him and I was like, yo, like, I want to make a team, but I don't know what to base it around, and he was like, just give me like, an, give me an idea, I'm like, I'm like, alright, there's a couple things. I wanted to have somewhat of a gimmick, just cause like, that I think it'd be kind of funny. And then I wanted to also have Weavile, if possible, cause Weavile is my favorite Pokemon. And he was like, I, right, I got you. So he came back with like, pretty much this, uh, idea. I like tweaked around with it a little bit, but pretty much the concept is, your starting is either gonna be Weavile Colossal, Colossal, sorry. Either Weavile Colossal Lead or Mudsdale Grimstar Lead. Togekiss and Gastrodon will always be in the back. Um, so yeah, Weavile uh, Colossal. Um, yeah, I got like some of the stats and info on me. Give me one sec. I'm pretty scuffed with. And yeah, mind you, this is like my first video, and I am still learning a lot about VGC. So bear with me, and hopefully I'll get better in time if I continue to keep making content. Let me know if you enjoy it and whatnot. Uh, so the Weavile, yeah, it's typical 252 attack, 252 speed, 4 HP EVs, um, what's it called, uh, Jolly Nature, just to make sure that, like, it outspeeds, like, everything, especially Dragapult. Um, I think it also outspeeds, like, Tailwind, like, I, I didn't do too much when it comes to, like, calculating, I just, like, roll with it, like, again, this is my first event. Uh... But yes, it's a choice scarf mainly because it's mainly used to like get the surf off on it and activate Colossal's steam engine and weakness policy. Uh, Colossal, Colossal was pretty much um, it was 252 special attack, 200 speed, and 56 HP. Uh, so yeah, it's we've all mainly used to get the surf off. Um, and also, and, and if anything, say they start Dragapult, I can like switch out Colossal and then like Dynamax Weavile and Max Darkness to Dragapult. Pretty sure it won't, yeah, like one hit KOs it, and, or like almost does, but it will outspeed it. Be, like, at least on Dynamax, it will outspeed because of the Choice Scarf. But nonetheless, because um, of course Dynamax doesn't take Choice into account. Uh, but yeah, so main reason was to use a Surf, activate Steam Engine Weakness Policy, so. Colossal will have plus six, uh, plus six speed, plus two, and plus two special attack, and then it can just go ham. Especially if I get a max rock, rock fall out, because then it activates sandstorm, which increases my special defense, and then hopefully be able to just like run through. Unless, but the main, I really only used them as a lead for two games total out of I think I went eleven and six in games total, and. <laughs> and two of the losses were from Weavile Colossal. I didn't win any with them, so that, I'll, I'll get into the other uh, gimmick in a sec. But yeah, that was pretty much just the concept of that. And then also, it's good because I have Togekiss with... <laughs> kind of interesting, I'll get to the Togekiss in a sec. 
but Togekiss as like a utility, like follow me, like like and jump around and let Colossal keep swinging, and then Gastrodon to check uh, water types as well as just like be being able to well handle Pokemon like Excadrill and Duraludon and whatnot. But yeah, mainly the Storm Drain will check like oh like if someone tries to max Geyser Colossal, I just switch into Gastro. So it, it's a, it's a very good check for that. Uh, the Gastrodon, by the way, is... Where, where is the EVs? It's 252 HP, 252 defense, 4 special attack, bold nature. Pretty pretty standard defensive tank, Scald, Earth Power, Recover, Protect. And then, of course, Colossal, I have Ancient Power, Heat Wave, Solar Beam, Protect. And then we have uh, Surf, Throw Chop, uh, Icicle Crash, and Brick Break in case I run into any, like, dual screeners. And yeah, and Togekiss, Togekiss has the interesting set, I would say. It definitely can't caught a lot of people off guard, especially involving the main set I use, which I'll get to in a sec. But the Togekiss has Follow Me, Air Slash, Dazzling Gleam, Ally Switch. Follow Me is definitely the more common. Not many people, I don't really see anyone run an Ally Switch on Togekiss, but I just, the whole concept, I just love Ally Switch as a move because it's just like, it automatically makes your opponent have to think, all right, is he going to ally switch? Do I have to be prepared for it? Especially in scenarios when I have ground types and they have electric types. Like, because they're like, oh yeah, they're going to try to attack my... There's not there's not a move that directly makes... makes there's not a follow me that makes it so your opponent targets your teammate. But ally switch can inherently do that. And it definitely came in clutch in a decent amount of scenarios. Like if I was up against like a Rotom... And I didn't, because, and also, yeah, no, Gastrodon is a huge counter for a uh, Rotom Wash. But there was this scenario where I didn't have uh, Gastrodon. And I had uh, Mudsdale and Togekiss. And then, yeah, like, they had Max Lightning, but I did Ally Switch. And then the Max Lightning went into the Mudsdale, obviously not affecting it, allowing me to keep swinging with Mudsdale. So having, and then, like, people were like, I right, if they have Ally Switch, they're not going to have Follow Me. And then I'll do Follow Me the next turn, and I'll throw them off. They'll be like, what the fuck? They'll be like, why don't you have Yawn? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I like having that. And also has uh, Serene Grace on it because in, it has 252 special attack, 252 speed, 4 HP. So, and because the Air Slash, uh, which is definitely came in clutch. Along with combining it with my main core, which I'll go over right now, uh, Grimmsnarl and Mudsdale. Those, these were the two Pokemon I led with every time. And, like, definitely brought me all my wins. So, the Grimmsnarl was a 252 HP, 252 special defense for attack. A lot of people like running defense on it too, which I feel like inherently came in clutch in a lot of scenarios because people would use a special attacker on it thinking, because I, I feel like more Grimmsnarls run defense based, but Gastrodon's my defense tank. And then they'll just like swing with like a special attacker. It can live like a dazzling gleam from um, like Togekiss, like perfectly fine. And, uh, yeah, it, it definitely, like, is secure. Now, like, obviously, it is not too uncommon of a strat, but pretty much I have Grimstorm, Mudsdale, but own Tempo, Mudsdale, and not Stamina. Uh, that, this being, um, uh, not only does, like, its it attack not drop from Intimidate, but also I swagger it with Grimstorm, because that's the gimmick. It, the swagger priority is, like, priority because of Prankster. Increase, special, increase the attack, and I don't get confused because of own tempo. Um, but yeah, and also I have Swagger, T-Wave, and Darkest Lariat. Uh, T-Wave also came in clutch in scenarios, not only for Mudsdale being able to outspeed some slower tanks, but also um, because I could paralyze, and then when Togekiss came in the back, like Air Slash, not only did Togekiss like, outspeed a lot of the time, pretty much most of the time, but got Air Slashes off, and then you have Serene Grace, Serene Grace flinches along with Parahaxis, and it could just it can just burn them down pretty well. Uh, but yeah, no, the main gimmick was Grimstone and Mudsdale. Um, if I could just like swag, at least get one swagger up on Mudsdale, Dynamax Mudsdale, have um, steel steel spikes and quakes to make like give me like there were plenty of times I would have plus um, plus four attack from two swaggers like plus two defense and then like plus one special defense along with assault fest he literally just lived and like i want to say like three of the sets that i won were literally just setting up mudsdale and then they literally could not take him down 
and like their only water type, like the only, because grass is not really that common of a, um, yeah, of a type. It was more like water and ice that like would take care of it. The main thing that does counter this, I would say, is like Vanillix, because like, obviously you got like max hailstorms and whatnot, and then also freeze dry to take care of Gastrodon. But honestly, I actually did not run into like any van Vanillixes. So that was good, but I definitely like need a check for that as well. There's definitely gonna be adjustments to this team, of course. But um, yeah, no, dude, own tempo swagger, swagger Grimmsnarl, own tempo Munsdale. I love it. Like it's definitely very fun. Um, it catches a lot of people off guard. Like every like even some of the experience names. Um, they were like, wait, what? Like they were confused. Like why? Like. Like you're not running stamina in one and fucking body press or whatever. I'm like, nah, man, fuck that. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, tank. Not only bulk him up and tank, but like make him just kill you. Uh, yeah. The Munsdale also is, yeah, 252 HP, 252 attack, four special defense. I'm definitely gonna like try to balance out the EVs more now that I have like time and more interest in VGC. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the main concept of my team. Sorry if that was like confusing at all. But uh, let me, I'm gonna go into like the actual sets. Not not too much into detail. Just like a couple of fights. At least the, the so the first set that I played, I two would a guy. Um, Luca was his name, and he and his main dude. Also another thing before I get into it, it was so stressful. Oh my god, I did not expect it to be as mentally draining. As it was, but after like three sets, I was like, dude, I was like getting a headache because I had to like think so much. It was pretty stressful waiting, knowing what they were doing. It was it was pretty wild. So I don't even I don't remember the teams fully. I know like it was a Togekiss Durant lead, I'm pretty sure, for the first guy. And first game I beat him like pretty well, and then the second game was a 1v1 with uh, like Durant and uh Gastrodon, and I was able to live. It was a it was an X scissor, and then I like just earth powered and was able to kill him. So I 2 would that guy, and that guy actually. So the, um, the thing with the midseason showdown. Also, by the way, shout outs to all the people that um, ran the event. Did a great job, perfectly like done, and I had a great time. Uh, but what was I gonna say? Look, I honestly forgot what I was gonna say. I'm I'm like this is what happens when I talk too much. I just forget things. Uh, no, okay, so yeah, there were, it was mid-season showdown, there was two days, there was a Saturday bracket, along with a premiere challenge, which is a best of one that happens after the mid-season showdown, if you don't make top cut. I'm not gonna talk about that one that much. Um, and then it was also on Sunday. I did not go on Sunday, because I had, like, other stuff to do, but, so I only went on Saturday. Um, but the guy I played round one in the mid-season showdown, who I beat, he actually got second on the second day, so that was pretty cool to watch. Like, whoa! Like this. Okay, this guy is actually good. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty nice, huh? Nah, but uh, I'm I'm not not I'm not that nice. Not yet though. I'm still learning. I'm getting there. I promise. But so yeah, I beat that guy, and then pretty much I won my second set to a, a lot more confident, like a lot better that time. Cause like it was like it was two like games that started off with good like turn one reads for me. So, cause um, he started off with Excadrill T Tar, which is a very common lead, and I started Grimmsnarl Mudsdale. And I'm like, alright, he's gonna switch out with one of them, but I don't know who. So I'm I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna fake out this Excadrill in case it's Focus Sash. And then I just like Dynamax Max Quakes the Excadrill and he switched out T Tar and I was able to just take out Excadrill right away and then set up a swagger on Mudsdale and he really did not have anything that could like cleanly kill my um my, like if I see a team I this this is also like what I considered when like if it, if if I saw an opponent had a fake out or a mock punch lead or like a Togekiss Durant lead is like a big factor. Then I that that's why when I don't start Weavile Colossal. If fake out, if, if I see Conquer, I don't. Um, if I see uh him on top, I don't. And then like if I see Togekiss, I don't. Or like just if anything, like like or Whimsicott. Togekiss and Whimsicott, because then Tailwind and like a fast, like 
ground type or like Togekiss uh, Whimsicott Excadrill can like mess me up. So those were the main factors that made me not do Weavile Colossal. But then also just that like even teams that didn't have that, I just did Grimstone on Mudsdale because I was just using it already. It was working. So I was like, why not? Uh, but pretty much the second set, yeah, I called him out the first game. Called out his switch and then was able to build up my Mudsdale. And then the second game, he started Togekiss Excadrill. And I was like, all right, I didn't see your Togekiss last game, so I'm guessing this is weakness policy. Otherwise, if it was utility, I feel he would have had him the first game. So I called that he was going to switch out Excadrill and Dynamax Togekiss. So I'm instead of fake out, I swaggered my Mudsdale and then did a max rockfall on the Togekiss actually killing it right away. Well, I mean, I took a, I took a Max Starfall, but my Grimstone has Focus Sash, so it didn't die for me. As you know, wait, what am I saying? I did Steel Spike, not um, Rockfall. If I did Rockfall, then Grimstone would have died from the uh, Sandstorm. So I did Steel Spike, and then I actually killed it, because I knew it didn't, wasn't Babiri Berry. Well, I didn't know, but I called out that it was Babiri Berry, and I was right. Um, forgot if I critted that too, but nonetheless, Hey, I and then I was just able to run away from that and then the video you're about to watch is the third match that I had It was uh, on the stream streaming round three. We were both 2-0 It was with a popular youtuber slash streamer. You may know of called a drive. He is a super homie Shout out to him by the way. He actually like did really well the second day proud of him I think he got 10th also on the second day and I got 10th the first day. Let's go uh but yeah, we play it on stream, and I'm actually going to play that right now, and I'm going to like break down like certain parts of the match for you. So here we are loading up into the match versus Dan aka 8Drive, and the first thing that I see right away is the Raichu and Gyarados. That is a very, I want to say a common combination, but Raichu is a very common lead when it is seen, and Gyarados is a very common compliment to the lead so i'm like okay i see fake out so i am not doing the weavile colossal um yeah so far in, like at this point in the tournament i haven't done any weavile colossal games so yeah i um i just stick with the uh grimstone mudsdale star and togekiss gastrodon in the back so i'm like i i bet he's gonna start uh gyarados raichu and lo and behold i was right he's gonna start gyarados raichu now I'm confident that I am, like, that he's not going to focus um, Grimstorm with the Gyarados, so I'm fine taking a fake out, and I know that I won't be able to fake out the Raichu. So pretty much we're going to start Dynamaxing. He Dynamaxes his Gyarados, I'm going to Dynamax my Mudsdale. I, will, I went for the Swagger on my Mudsdale just in case the possibility of somehow... Um, Raichu not being like, well, not going for the fake out, but um, yeah, so we're just gonna Dynamax here, and I am gonna take the fake out, which, like I said, I'm fine with as long as I can like get a swagger or something, then I will be perfectly all right with it. But I kind of misplay coming up, I'm not, but uh, nonetheless, so he's gonna f go for the fake out, yep, gets it. And then right here, he's going to Max Geyser uh, me. And I'm, that's not going to do too much. That's just going to do about half. So I wasn't sure if this Raichu was lightning rotted or not. Um, but nonetheless, I'm just going to go for the Max Rock Fall right here. Sorry if I'm like not good at this. I'm like, I like chopped up, chopped up the time in between matches. Uh, to make it like easier. So I go for the Max Rockfall, and that is going to not only break the Focus Sash that the Raichu probably has on, but he isn't going to have his Max Geyser, so he won't get the boost on the next one. Um, but yeah, pretty much going into the next turn, I am actually going to switch out my Grimmsnarl here into the Gastrodon. I actually like confused like this game with the next one, and you'll see what I'm talking about later. But anyways, I switch out of the Gastrodon. He's going to Brick Break my Mudsdale, because I'm assuming he's going to try to Brick Break and Max Geyser because he, he wasn't confident if the Max Geyser was going to kill but the Storm Drain from the Gastrodon, Gastrodon is going to uh, absorb the Max Geyser protecting Mudsdale and the second Rockfall is going to take out Gyarados so not looking that good for him right now although I really don't have any boosts on Mudsdale well I don't have any 
besides the assault vest, there really isn't anything on the team that like can mess me up besides like a solar beam if I'm a from a maxed up colossal. But uh, nonetheless, I'm not really afraid of that. And right now, we're waiting to see who we bring in. He brings in the Conqueror. Now, this was kind of like I didn't like think about this much. I f didn't think about the, of him having Togekiss in the back, so I go for the. I'm actually going to go for the Earth Power on the Raichu spot, but he switches into the Colossal, which is pretty interesting that he has that as his last option, other than, like, I would think Togekiss, cause, just because of the utility, but that make, that kind of tells me that it's, like, probably, like, a weakness policy. Like, like th that's what I'm thinking at the time, that it's a weakness policy one, so I just go for the Earth Power, and that is going to take him out four times super effective, even with the special defense boost from the Sandstorm. And then I'm just going to max Steel Spike to uh, boost up my defense since Conqueror is the only thing that will, like, give me damage at the- yeah, get, deal, like, a decent damage to Mudsdale at this point. Um, and I know uh, Max uh, Quake wouldn't have killed. And now I, and I also have the plus one on the Gastrodon, which Raichu really can't hurt as well. So I know that, um... He's Conqueror is most likely gonna focus the Gastrodon. Um, so yeah, he, he gets hit by the fake out as well as a drain punch, but defensively tanky, he is going to eat that up perfectly fine. And then I'm just gonna focus a uh, high horsepower onto the Conqueror. Not gonna take it out, but leaves him with like not much where like the next one will take it out. Um, so yeah, in general, this is just a really good spot for me. I still got Grim Snarl. And Togekiss in the back. Togekiss would easily be able to take out um, Conqueror if need be. But we like in the position we are in, I'm not going to like have any issues as he forfeits that game. So right now we are going to go into game two, which I knew he was gonna switch it up. I knew he wasn't gonna stick with Raichu and Gyarados, so he goes to Togekiss and Gyarados. And this is where I do something a little bit different and kind of catches me off guard um but nonetheless again same same thing i'm going to um dynamax now i wasn't sure if like, like at this point since i had since i didn't see togekiss last game i wasn't sure if this togekiss was um like weakness policy with like like an attacker or like defensive with babiri berry but i mean it, i kind of got the idea that it was defensive well not defensive but more like utility with Babiri Berry, and like the follow me definitely tells me. I went for the swagger um, on the Mudsdale just to get like that boost and possibly take out Gyarados like that one turn. But I get a swagger on the Togekiss, which isn't bad. I mean, he's not like not a physical attacker, so that's perfectly fine. Gets the confusion on him. Uh, the Gyarados is gonna Dragon Dance, which like I was like, all right, well played. You like using him getting a turn to set up. Uh, the Togekiss is gonna have the Babiri Berry, um, underst understandable, very common item for Togekiss there. Uh, I'm not gonna do too much, obviously not stabbed, I'm not boosting the attack, but nonetheless the next one will kill if I get it done. And yeah, looking over the team, besides Colossal, it's pretty much just physical attacker, so I'm fine, mainly I'm com comfortable doing max steel spikes and whatnot. Uh, so right here... He's gonna Dynamax his Gyarados, and he is going to try to read a switch into my Gastrodon because he didn't want to like the same thing to happen again. Me bringing in on a Max Geyser because it was obvious that he was, he was gonna Dynamax his turn. Uh, so what I do here is I'm gonna go for the Thunder Wave on the Gyarados, but I find out that da -da -da -da, he has a Lumberry, which will cure it. And I was like, okay, all right, that was that's good, that was good. So obviously I write that down. It's always good to have notes on you on hand while playing. And he's gonna go for the max overgrowth. Like I said, trying to read the Gastrodon switch. Uh, he gets the crit, which it's not terrible. I mean, obviously I have Focus Sash, so it's fine. And it probably it would have 2 KO'd anyway, I'm sure. Because I'm not uh, physically defensive. Uh, but I'm gonna live. The confusion is gonna force him to hit himself. And you, you see him in the, uh, the player camp. He was not happy about that. I don't blame him. Because that's actually gonna cost uh, his Togekiss, and not only that, I'm sure he was going to go for a Dazzling Gleam, which would have taken out my Grimmsnarl, and thus not allowing me to do what I do next turn. Uh, so I get the second Max Steel Spike, so I'm plus two defense right now. 
which is obviously <laughs> pretty nice, pretty nice. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking good right now. I'm like looking for the conclude. Yep, the conclude is coming out right now. And so now I have a feeling a mock punch is coming to get rid of Grimstone. So I'm just gonna throw on a swagger on Mudsdale right before he goes. And the mock punch. Yep, there it is. And right now, um, I'm guessing he he does the older overgrowth again to play it safe because he knows that. There's still the threat of the Gastrodon. Um, but with uh, plus two defense, that over overgrowth is only going to do a little bit over a quarter. And plus two of Max Rock falls super effective. It's going to one shot this Gyarados pretty free. And as you can see right there, he takes off the earbuds. He's like, hey, good games. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> we were, it, like, and during this point, we were just chatting for a bit because, yeah, it, like, this kind of told me that like he really didn't have much. I knew he didn't have Raichu, or I'm pretty, and I'm sure he didn't have Bronze on, so I'm just positive the last one now would be Colossal. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna right now bring in Togekiss, which obviously will handle Colossal pretty fine, and neither of them, these guys are fast, uh, so Togekiss will at least outspeed both of them. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much just a wrap from here. Um, Mudsdale is just super stacked, and he's ready to mess shit up <laughs> but yeah that's uh, pretty much gonna wrap it up guys um for my first vgc event i had a great time it was different change of pace definitely from smash tournaments when i'm used to been in after being involved for all these years yeah it was a good change of pace yeah he's just like throwing out a heat wave hoping for a burn hoping for something that would help but doesn't get any of it uh I'm definitely looking to try and do more content of this, so if you do enjoy, I would really appreciate uh, a like on the video, comment on what you want to see, subscribe. I'm very, I have been very inconsistent with videos. It's I'm very, I apologize about that, but you know, like I do, I, I'm trying to do what I can. <laughs> I'm, I got like school going on. Um, maybe I'll post an update video as I like post more stuff about like what's new with me. But yeah, I'm gonna take that to O. And actually how the rest of the tournament went, I won my next two sets after. Those were two game three sets that were really close. Um, my round six was when I got my first loss versus this guy Jeremy Oldena, I think that's how you pronounce it. But he's actually one of like the top players in the world. Um, he's been doing, he's been playing Pokemon VGC for years. Uh, he actually just played it like really well and kind of messed me up and he talked to me as he's like, yeah, I used to play with Mudsdale at the start and I know how to work around him. I'm like, I could tell. And then my seventh round, I um, played against uh, this guy named Arbin, who actually, um, he got second on the first day. We actually had a close game three set, well, semi-close. Game three wasn't that close, and I only, <laughs> I shouldn't really say that close, because in game two, I'm pretty sure I only won, because I got four paralyzes in a row. <laughs> so, shout out to Grimstorm. But, yeah, we had a game three set there, and yeah, uh, he actually got second the first day, and he won on Sunday. Second on Saturday, I should say. And he won on Sunday, so I was like, damn, like, I'm, I know with, like, more practice and work, I can, like, easily get to that level. Um, but yeah, no, I finished, like I said, I finished 5-2, and 10th place out of 105 people. Got 20 points, 20 championship points, and if you reach 400 before, I think it's the end of June, then you get an invite to Worlds, which would be freaking awesome. So we'll see what happens with that. But I'm definitely gonna try to like put more work into this, uh, learn, uh, go to more stuff. So I'm actually pretty excited, honestly. And yeah, like I said, it was a great time. Shout out to the team over at the uh, Mid-Season Showdown at Island, New Jersey, and, and the Liberty Garden team. I had a great time. And yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.